Hot dog, welcome back. It's that time again. So call your mama, tell her it'll be a while because we're trying out some dolls. Today, FL Studio. First off, let me say, I really enjoy trying out all these different dolls. There's a different way to think about making music and there's value to be had in letting yourself get outside that box that you're kind of in. This one, this one's different. I don't think I've encountered a doll like FL Studio. I, I've never played with it. Leading up to doing this, I didn't know I need to make sure it works and all that stuff. And I kept playing with it and I kept playing with it and I kept playing with it. It is a fundamentally different way to think about making music that there's no way I could be a pro on that level. So how I'm approaching this is can I do what I'm used to doing in Pro Tools or another DAW? Can I do that in FL Studio? For everybody out there who is an FL Studio user, the cringe is high on this one. But hear me out. I enjoy this. It is so different, but it's so lightweight. The tools that come with it are crazy powerful. FL Studio is definitely one of those DAWs that kind of gets memed a whole lot. And I don't think all of it's warranted. This is pretty powerful. For all those the first time here, here's the deal. I'm trying out as many does as I can just to see the differences that are out there because I've been Pro Tools for so long, I don't even know what else is out there. I've tried quite a few at this point and I've learned a whole lot in today's FL Studio. So what I'm going to be doing and the approach that I've decided to take with this, how quickly can I get up and running in FL Studio with the knowledge that I have from other DAWs? Key points for me, super easy, hangs out in the background. It lets you do what you wanna do without thinking too much about it. Right click, crazy powerful here. Tools are laid out in a very intuitive way. Signal flow, once you understand what they're doing, makes a whole lot of sense. A lot of sense. Bussing and auxes. If you're using a DAW for the first time, you'll get it. If you're coming from the world of outboard gear and you're used to hooking up cables, you'll get it. Every DAW has isms and FL Studio certainly has a whole lot of isms. But once you see it and you're exposed to it and you know what they're representing or what things really mean. It's a super powerful engine to work with. So we're gonna open FL Studio. God, that happens quick. That is nuts. Honestly, this has been one of the ones that's requested a lot. A few people are posting, when are you gonna do FL Studio? And honestly, I haven't given it a whole lot of thought. It seems to be one of those DAWs that's memed so hard that it would be easy to overlook. When I dive in here, I find something that's so vastly different than what I'm used to that I've really had to put some thought into this. It's definitely outside of my comfort zone. So the way I'm going to use it is kind of recreating what I'm comfortable with. And I know that's not getting the fullness out of this doll. There's so much that can happen here. It's built for almost a different type of user than what I'm used to. The playlisting and arrangement window is ridiculously powerful and does not necessarily correspond to the mixer window, how I would understand it coming from like the Pro Tools world. I think the possibilities within that are awesome. That said, I'm gonna use it in more of a way that I know, so I can kind of get the gist of this. I've come to grips with the fact that I'm not gonna become a pro with this right off the bat. So, if I'm approaching this like somebody looking for a DAW, can I use this the way I'm used to using other DAWs? So, right off the bat here, I have my plugin window open, I've got my mixer window and my arrangement window. So let's go pull in some tracks. So we're gonna pull these into the arrangement window and they come in like you would expect. In order, the way God intended. This is a song that I tracked probably like nine years ago. Something that never got released. The artist is cool with me using it. it. But some of these techniques and recording things that I was doing nine years ago, not necessarily things I'm employing. So I'm a little nervous to see what we hear. This looks like the BPM window. And I'm wondering if it'll change the pitch. Good, it does not change the pitch. So I know this is 112. That looks great. So one thing that I know I want to do right off the bat is to link the mixer and the arrangement window, because that's 
pretty much what I'm used to seeing in Pro Tools, corresponding with the mix window and the edit window. You don't have to do that here. If I wanted to, I could send all of these tracks to one track on the mixer and treat them all the same. I could send all of the drums to one. I want to be able to affect everything, so I'm going to send everything to a corresponding thing here. So let's go ahead and select everything. So track mode, audio track, insert. Okay, now we're gonna go through and auto name them. And I wonder if I can just hold like shift option and auto name. Heck yeah, look at that. Okay, cool. Now if I pull this back, anything I have in my arrangement window here is corresponding one-to-one -to, -one to a track up here in the mix window. And that's more used to what I'm seeing. Real quick, I've got my master over here, all my tracks laid out left to right from one to 31. And then I have my plugin selections for whatever track I have selected over here. Real quick, I'm gonna get my master started so that we can monitor this and we can get it into OBS so that you can hear audio. So real quick, let's go to more plugins. We need to go to, there we go, okay, so. We have audio in OBS, that's great. So let's just start setting up the general mix bus here. I'm gonna reach for things I'm familiar with, but I'm also gonna try to work in some of the FL stuff here, because frankly, they're pretty darn powerful. They don't necessarily cover all of the bases that I feel comfortable working with. I'm just giving ourselves some decent headroom here. Oops, definitely don't want that. More plugs. I understand they want you to use the FLC, so you gotta go to like more plugs every time you wanna find something, but I am finding every time I hit S, it, it'll start playing whatever track I have in slow motion, which is not great. That took me a long time to actually figure out. I'll go ahead and set up the end of the chain, which I know I just want like a Fab Filter L2 here at the end. Let's go all around, turn no look ahead. 250-ish and reduce those transients. Let's go to a loud part here. Because there's no good way in FL Studio to get my outboard gear working with this mix, I'm kind of going around it and uh, I'm using Master Desk because it kind of does the same things that my Neve will do as far as like stereo enhancements and like general EQ and stuff. And it's a little squishy, which I like. We'll leave it right there for right now. Okay. Whoops. All these buttons I'm not quite used to. So our master chain is generally set up here. So now what I want to do is start working with buses. Let's go ahead and get all of our drums, which go, looks like to 14 here. So, uh, oh yeah, when you name something, it doesn't like that. So hold command and drag. I'm gonna go over here to like any free one. I don't care, let's go to this one right here. Say route to this track only. So now all of my drums are going to just that track. And this track itself is going back to the master. So now that's our drum bus. Uh, and I can now move this over to the beginning of my drums if I want to and rename this guy drum bus. And if I want, I can even change the color of all of my drums just to something generally uniform here. So now I know all those things are grouped and I can quickly see those are my drums. Uh, acoustic, let's go ahead and change his color because I don't want to get confused here. I mean, right off the bat though, I'm liking the way this is flowing. So if I want to solo... Sounds like there were some issues with that bass, but let's go ahead and just treat it as if it's fine. I mean, nine years ago, I'm gonna make mistakes.
Uh, I'm, this is where I'm going to start reaching for some like fruity plugins over here. Uh, what I love is if you right click, it brings you to this cool screen. And now I have, it took me forever to actually see this. I didn't know what was happening, but just hovering down here and you have access to all this stuff and then you can come back. So what I want is an EQ. Um, parametric, sure, let's go. Where are you at? Hello? Oh, it's behind this, okay, sure. I mean, generally, this stuff is so powerful and it works exactly the way you would think. I don't have any of my Waves plugins here, I don't think. Yeah, unfortunately, like, Waves just isn't gonna work. Crap. Okay, we can deal. Because this is a, a situation where I would definitely reach for, like, our base in a situation like that. So let's see if we have kind of a uh, Fruity Loops. I keep wanting to call it Fruity Loops. It is not Fruity Loops, it is FL Studio. There's a Fruity Loops bass boost. That does exactly what I want it to do. Okay, not bad. And then what I have found with the compressors is they're not super great at what I want. So let's gonna, we're just gonna go for double tap for this. Let's real quick, just go ahead and pan some of these things. Uh, Hi-hats, overhead, okay, room, close, room hat, room ride, GJ hat. Oh, I used to do a Glenn Johns thing like all the time. All right, let's get on this drum bus, just right off the bat here. Uh, let's see what we have as far as like gain goes. Gain. Uh, fruity balance. Fruity, fruity send. Stereo enhancer. Stereo shaper. What is the send? Can I use outboard gear? Oh, why do they disappear? There it is. Send two. Oh, okay. But actually, I could use this. So if I send this to like 35. Wait, what? I don't think that's gonna do what I want it to do. All right, now essentially I have a trim plugin. That needs to go first though, so let's move that up. Oops. Sound goodizer. I mean, I'm wanting to just like obliterate the snare bottom, so let's see. That might work. This room close is off of Sounds awesome though. I'm sure at that point I was just obliterating it going into Pro Tools to start with. This room far is something pretty cool. So I have a vestibule here at the studio, and before I expanded, there was a tile room out front where I put a mic, and it's still there. 
Uh, but that room is just, it's huge, tiled, tall ceilings, and it sounds nasty. So it was a really cool reverb chamber. So I would love to compress the snot out of that. Oh, geez. I lost my windows. View. Channel. Tra no, that's not what I want. View. Mixer. Hey, okay, we're back. Whew. The escape key is powerful here. Dynamics. Limiter, compressor, soft clipper, Maximus, transient processor. I'm not sure how much it's compressing, but it'll get the job done for what we want. I'm gonna start working on some of the other aspects of this mix real quick. I am really liking this workflow. It's, it's getting me to think about stuff super different, and I don't know that it's faster, <laughs> but it's not abrasive. Gone this whole time without my coffee. Still warm. So now these are gonna be my chorus vocals. Make it an obnoxious color so I don't lose it. I'm just gonna toss a real quick delay on here. Let's just do something super simple. Sounds like there's something weird with the detector not, it's, it's like it's not hearing it and treating the left and right the same. So let's test this theory here. Ooh, okay. So it does seem like there's something weird with the stereo plug. Maybe it's just this one in particular. Can I? Copy, save preset as, so what if I just want like vocal comp? I don't know. So then if I come over here, can I use my preset? Huh, yeah, nope. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but it's not, it's not quickly findable. So I guess I'm just gonna copy all these over. All around. What's so different from me, the others seem to make it out. I'm in a place that most call a wreck. You know what, we're treating all these the same, so we can just send them basically through a vocal bus. So let's just do this. All around. What's so different from me, the others seem to make it out. I'm in a place that most call a wreck What's so different from me The others seem to make it out of here Such a cool song So I, I know I want to send these guitars Oops, not that I want to send all these guitars to a bus here I did this in the wrong order, so, jeez, oh, I don't want to compress the reverb. I do feel kind of naked here because I can't use my Waves plugins that I would normally use on guitar. And I'm realizing now how much I rely on Renaissance Axe for guitars. It's it's just always good. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's play with with this, I guess. It is easy to accidentally put a plug on the wrong track. I am finding that. I mean, I, you can easily turn it off, but. Did I just do it again? Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's 
let's make these like crazy wet. <laughs> This is where I want to try something here. I have the Edison pulled up. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Let's record. Okay. Swim! Really cool. And this plugin alone, Edison, you can record within the plugin itself. It's a fundamentally different way to think about how to operate a DAW, but it allows you to do some really interesting stuff. And I am not a pro at this. So let's pull up the reverb. Let's get a, just a ton of wet here. Let's do that one more time. I need to turn it down a little bit. Cool, okay, so that's pretty close. But first, let's do something. There we go, we're gonna reverse it. Now let's pull up our reverb process. Dope. And let's pull that in, huh? Let's go ahead and map this. I think I have something in 32 already, yeah. And then we're gonna slowly fade it in as that scream comes in, so. So many interesting things you can do here, and it's powerful. It's a fundamentally different way to work, and I'm not a pro at this by any means. And I wanna give this another try. I've recreated a workflow that I'm familiar with, but I would love to use this for the full power that it has, like this arrangement window. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do in here that's like completely separate from thinking about this as like a linear DAW. And I'm not sure I totally have my head wrapped around it because that's never how I've worked. That said, if I don't have much editing to do as far as like lining up drums, stuff like that, this is powerful. And it's crazy lightweight on the system itself. I don't know that it'll replace Pro Tools for me for the type of work that I do. That said, I'm really intrigued to work at this from an arrangement standpoint, and I would love to use it as a songwriting tool. I kind of want to figure that out, and because there's so much here that I've barely touched on, and I, I've kind of bent it into what I need to do to make it work, but that said, if it can also do this, and it has all this other side of things, like it's pretty powerful. And I was able to get up and running with it quicker than most DAWs. It's pretty intuitive. And the tools that are here for you are flexible and useful. They're definitely tilted for someone programming things a little more. I do see like a lack of like a useful compressor where you can see the gain reduction happening. Just something super simple. And general like utility tools like that. That said, like the transient processor is actually really good. Like if I go to the snare here, I absolutely love having an EQ right here, having a blend of every plugin right here so you can quickly do parallel processing right there. I mean, it's pretty well thought out. 
Everything you need is here. There's very little distractions. That said, I would feel weird about editing in here. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but like, if I wanted to edit a drum set, I would not know where to begin. It's not evident. I'm definitely using it in a way that it's not necessarily intended for. It can be used like this, but this is not necessarily its target market, I don't think, based on what I've seen. Uh, but, I mean, there is an endless amount of tools here that's just full-featured, and it definitely gets pushed to the back burner, I think. If you're doing this at home and you're writing stuff, like, this is powerful. If I'm learning anything from trying all these DAWs, it's that there's so many different ways to think about doing the same thing, and not one of them is necessarily right. It's about what fits with your workflow. For somebody in my shoes, like it's really hard to switch because I have such a vast knowledge in one very specific area, for better or worse, that's my case. But man, there's a lot out there and there's not a bad decision. I, I was really surprised how much I liked this. I feel like I've said that about every single DAW that I've worked with, but honestly, there's, there's not a bad DAW out there. I don't think that I've tried yet. They, they all have their thing. An FL's thing seems to be the most unique that I've tried so far. It is, it's a very outside the box way of thinking about it. To where if this was your first DAW, I could see how you would not like any other DAW. Um, but coming to it from something else that's more linear, and, and I'm not saying this is a not a linear DAW, but coming at this from something like a Pro Tools or like a logic that it's it's a very different way to approach making music but super cool <laughs> super duper cool anyway guys if you like this and you want to see more stuff like this hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'm resident loser jeremy i will see you in the next one